All right, everyone. So the very first network we're going to look at is perhaps one that you don't have a lot of experience with, but you might have heard of it. Raise your hand if you've previously heard of the social network Google+. Plus. Okay. More, more than I thought. Good. How many of you have actually then used it, however? Raise your hand. Okay. Less people. The thing about Google Plus is um, it is a it is a social network like Facebook. We can equate a lot of things um, to Facebook because it's the most famous one. But Google Plus is yet another social network for you to reach an audience. And there are hundreds of millions of people using Google Plus, just like there's hundreds of millions of people using Twitter and all of the rest. Let me show you this case study right here. I'm going to show you this website that is a really good website that I recommend you make a note of. This website is mashable.com, M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E, mashable.com. So go over to mashable.com. We're going directly to their website, mashable.com. And here, this is a website about technology and social media, online culture, and such. And I bring this up for two reasons. One is that I recommend you, you visit this site on a regular basis. On the menu on the side here, my screen might look a little different than yours, but you should have a menu somewhere that says social media. So they publish a lot of content on social media. You might take this class, you might take it over and over. There's always going to be something new to learn. And this is a reputable site that I recommend to continue your learning. So up on that little menu, if you see the three-line menu, then you should see social media. And all of the social media news from this site will show up. 10 expert tips for your startup's website. You might not be a, web, a startup, but these 10 tips might still apply to you. Let's see. How to be more influential online. That sounds useful to a bunch of us. So lots of articles on a variety of social media. Updates, such as Twitter is implementing a brand new dash data dashboard. Okay, that's something I've got to read because that's pretty new. So Mashable.com, I bring this site up because it's a very useful site to keep up with all of this stuff. This is a moving target. Twitter has been around since 2006. Uh, Facebook has been around since 2004. Google Plus has been around since 2011. You don't need to know when they were invented, just that they are pervasive. These networks are everywhere. Maybe you don't use them as much, but your audience probably does. I see statistics all the time that every demographic, every age range is using social media more. Maybe you and your immediate friends don't, but outside of that, circle, a lot of people are, more and more people, every age group. It's so ubiquitous now. So it behooves you to get educated in using social media for your business. Where were the 10 tips? Well, if you clicked on the social media link and I just scrolled down and I found it on my first uh, icon there. And so I bring up Mashable.com because this is a site that takes advantage of all the social networks. On the top right corner, I see the familiar little F for Facebook, the little bird for Twitter, and the little G plus for Google+. And if you hover over that, it'll show you this is, uh, there's 2.4 million <coughs> likes on Facebook. There's five and a half million followers on Twitter, 395,000 followers on LinkedIn, 180,000 followers on YouTube, on and on and on. Five and a half million followers on Google+. And then there's Pinterest and Tumblr and Meerkat and a bunch of ones you've never heard of. That's the thing. It's a moving target. What's hot at the moment might no longer be hot. Uh, time will tell. But I bring this up to also show you as a case study. 
let's go look at this address. Let's go to google.com slash plus Mashable. On all of these networks you can create a vanity address. This is the address for Google Plus. So it's google.com slash plus Mashable for this website of course. Press enter and then we'll look at their Google Plus profile. So google.com slash plus Mashable. They have a presence on Google Plus, a profile on Google Plus. And it's going to look familiar like Facebook to some degree. All the social networks have similarities. There's a graphic at the top here to catch your attention. There's their logo. They have a little shield there for some reason I'll talk about. There's the name. There's a link back to their website. Make a note that on any social network, you want to have a link back to your main website. You don't want to keep people only on your social network. You want to direct them back to your website. The reason for that is, let's say I am an online bookseller. I want to sell rare books. So I'm going to get on Facebook, perhaps. I'm going to get on Instagram, Google+, whatever. I'm going to get on social media, and I've got my website. But I'm still going to have a link from my social networks back to my website because I cannot sell my books on Instagram or Twitter or Mashable or any of the social networks unless you're one of the big ones. And by big, I mean Amazon.com. You're probably not Amazon.com big yet. So we cannot sell our wares directly through any social network. Therefore, we want to have links back to our website where we can sell or have a contact form or a questionnaire or a donate button. We can't do any of that directly on the social networks. And here I see that they've got 5.1 million followers. So 5.1 million people have subscribed to them, in a sense. You can think of followers as subscribers, in a sense. 5 million captive audience members. So that means when they post something on Facebook, 5 million could potentially see it. I'm not saying all 5 million will see it and act upon it. Maybe only 100,000 act upon it. That's a good thing, isn't it? Only 100,000 hits. So the more followers you have, the more you can play these averages, these numbers, some amount of them will follow through. Some amount of them will click and buy. The more followers you have, the more chance you have of that. We'll talk about getting followers, of course. And Google Plus then shows this statistic, which is optional to show, uh, but it's got 542 million views. So lots and lots of people check them out on Google Plus, even if they're not following them. They still see their content and then could act upon it. Yes? Do we get a clue to the time frame for all those views? Is that the last day or month? Or? Yes, once we create an account, we will be able to see in detail the days and the months and more, more, more detail about those statistics. So proceeding down a little bit, this shows uh, there's an about screen, posts, photos, and YouTube. We'll look at those others in a bit. But here's a, face, here's a Google Plus post. Mashable shared this publicly at 10 a.m. today. The Pluto system is something wonderful. So there's a lot going on in, in science at the moment about Pluto. Uh, the probe that took nine and a half years to get there just got to Pluto and is taking a bunch of amazing photos and we're discovering a lot of amazing aspects of Pluto that no one, no human has ever seen. Right now we're living at a time where we're seeing the most close-up photos of a planet that was barely discovered in the 20th century. So that's something that's interesting. It's interesting to a bunch of people. This says plus 30. If you're familiar with Facebook and there's something that you enjoy that someone shared, you probably click like. Google Plus has the same thing, but they call it giving it a plus one. So 30 people like that enough to give it a plus one. 
on Facebook, if you like something enough to also have your friends and family see it, what are you doing then? Sharing. So you can share on Google Plus as well. That's been shared to three other accounts. Yes? So you're using Google Plus and Facebook almost interchangeably. Is Google Plus, uh, are they trying to be a Facebook uh, platform? Yes. Um, Google is in the main business of search. You want uh, it's become such a verb, hasn't it? Google it to search. So Google then saw, well, a lot of people are spending a lot of time on Facebook and not spending enough time on Google. So Google said, we're going to create our own social network to have people spend time on our social network and use our platform. So yeah, Google's purpose for Google Plus is to be a Facebook rival or replacement. Honestly, it's not going to be a replacement. Anything is going to be very, very, very hard. Every, everyone is going to have a very hard time to dethrone Facebook. They're so entrenched. But we're seeing here 500 million views, 5 million followers. We're seeing activity. So it's not going to be above it, but it's going to be on par. Why would we get on Google Plus instead of Facebook? Those are things I'll be talking about as well. But here I'm just giving you the character of what Google Plus is like, similar to Facebook. Humans keep crashing into Google's self-driving cars. That has 49 plus ones, 3 shares, and 10 comments. So there's a bunch of um, a bunch of posts on a variety of topics. Um, and the activity that we see could be plus ones, shares, or comments. Just like Facebook, just like Twitter, just like Pinterest. They all have this sort of mechanism of interaction. So we'll be talking about creating an account, posting content, targeting our content, getting interactions. And all of that is in an effort to visit our website, to subscribe to our newsletter, to buy our product, whatever it is that you're trying to do online. Let's compare and contrast this, then, with the other social networks. We're looking at Mashable's Google+. Plus. I'm going to open a new tab or a new window, and let's go to twitter.com slash Mashable. Twitter.com slash Mashable. That's their vanity address for uh, Twitter. Yes? Plus Mashable, and you did the Google. What's the difference between Google's um, method of giving you an address uses the plus. So that plus is on, only exists for Google Plus profiles. We don't see it on any of, of the other profiles. You notice on Twitter, there's no plus there. So if you go to twitter.com slash Mashable, we'll take a quick look at, at, Twitter's, at Mashable's Twitter account. We'll look at it more in detail on the day we talk about Twitter. Today's about Google+. But here I'm seeing, again, a large graphic to catch your attention. There's their logo. There's a little bit of biographical information here. Mashable news, resources, inspiration, and fun for the connected generation. Tweets by Mashable staff. Some pictures. <clears throat> information. A link back to the website. Or something here. Hello Pluto, after nine years and three billion miles, we finally meet our far-flung cosmic cousin. And then a link and a photo. And then I see the social interactions again. On Twitter, if you enjoy something, you can favorite it, the little star. If you like it enough to share with your friends and followers, you can retweet it. And then you've got a reply or comment. I wish that Twitter would activate I'm sure they can. I don't know why they don't do it. I wish that they would show that statistic on their replies as well. I can see at a glance. 181 retweets, 394 favorites, but I don't see how many replies. I don't know why they don't activate that. I, they really should. 
in order to see the replies, you, you click on the tweet, and then you'll see the replies. Anyway, that was a quick look at their Twitter. We'll look at other... Um, we'll look at in detail in Twitter a little bit more later. Uh, but the same sort of thing. Stuff is being published on both of these networks. Notice it's different things. Ideally, and it is the most work, you're going to publish different things on different networks. Obviously, that's more work. Um, if I compare the latest tweets on Twitter with the latest posts on, um, on Google+, we see different things, like this about uh, this post about Disneyland, and I, and I don't see it on, on Google+. So yes, it is more work and more effort. As beginners, it's perfectly fine to post the same thing on your different networks. But the thing is that each network has its own demographics, its own character, its own limitations. And so on Twitter, we will learn later, if you didn't know, we are limited to 140 characters. That includes letters, numbers, symbols, spaces, links, photos. All of that has to fit in 140 characters. We don't have that limitation on Google+. We can write five paragraphs if we want. No one's going to read five paragraphs, but you can write as much as you want on Google+. And lastly, we'll take a quick look at their Facebook profile. Facebook.com slash Mashable. They've got the same address on all the networks. Ideally, you also want the same. You want the same name on all of the networks. It's going to confuse people if you've got different names. Unfortunately, though, it's a fact of life that you don't have the same profile name on all the profiles. Because, as I said, Twitter's been around next year 10 years. Mm -hmm. Twitter's going to be around for a decade next year. Facebook has already been around a decade. I think it's 12 years now. Google Plus has been around since about 2011. So that means <laughs> your name might have already been taken. And you have very little recourse to take the name back. Especially if someone's using the profile legitimately. Question. Why is this Mashable so entrenched? I've never heard of it. Do you visit many blogs about social media and tech and such? Yeah, so they found their audience. They found their audience. That's why they have so many followers and likes and such. They found their audience. That's our purpose. Someone's going to ask, I've never heard of PMD Interactive, but why do they have 500 views or 5,000 followers or whatever? It's because the, the audience has been found. And the thing is, we want to target an audience. It's nice to say that everyone is going to like us and everyone is going to follow us, but no. If I sell baby strollers, not everyone is going to care about my product. So those that care about this product, which is a blog about technology and society and, and culture, mm -hmm. will find it and care about it. So Mashable blog before with Twitter, and they're just a social presence. That's what they do. Mashable is a is a website about articles, about social media and funny things and technology and so forth. So, but they're using all of the networks to get more traffic to their website. So I forgot to say on Twitter, at the top here, it says they have five and a half million followers. And then on Facebook, they've got three million likes. So three million Facebook, 5.5 million Twitter, and 5.1 million Google+. Plus. So lots of people paying attention to them. And then on Facebook, they've got, again, their logo, but then a different eye-catching picture here. You can have the same design on each platform. No problem. They have just chosen to have a different picture, a different design at the top. Their logo is consistent. It's that M on the blue background. Let's see what what they've got. So this, I did see that same post on Twitter, but notice it was published 22 minutes ago instead of 
46 minutes ago. That same post I'm seeing it here, it has 36 favorites, 34 retweets. On uh, Google+, Plus, I see that it has 126 likes, or favorites, 33 shares. So comparing that, the shares are just about the same, 34 to 33. The likes are completely different. The likes on Twitter are only 36, but the likes on Facebook are 126. And so again, different audiences, different demographics targeting different people. Most of the thing that's being posted on all three networks is a little blurb, so a little preview text, a picture, but then a link back to their website. There's a link back to Mashable. There's a link back to Mashable.com. There's a link back to Mashable.com. Twitter, there's a link back to Mashable.com. A link back to Mashable. A link back to Mashable. And then on Google+. Plus. A link back to Mashable, back to Mashable. You get the point. Uh, you're going to be tweeting or Facebooking or Google Plusing stuff to an audience, and most of the time you're going to be linking back to your website where appropriate. We'll talk about when appropriate. But a link back to your website because that's where they can read the whole article. That's where they can buy the product. That's where they can subscribe. So if I look at seven surprising things we've already learned about Pluto and its moons, great, I read the article. What's the point of them? They're not trying to sell me anything. They don't have a book. They don't have a seminar. They don't have a conference. A lot of the ways some companies can make money online are through those things that maybe you've never clicked on, but a lot of people do, the ads. So there's an ad right there, now accepting students in California. About your mortgage. 70% off shopping at Zulily. So these companies, many of them, make their money uh, through advertising. And so if they drive traffic back to the website, they get clicks on the ads, they get money. So there's 5 million people that could be clicking on Google+, 5 million on Twitter, 3 million on Facebook. That's generating some revenue for them. I have a question. Yes. So do you recommend going on Mashable, and if I see something that relates to my business, I share it back to my um, Google Plus page? Sure. Is that a strategy I should focus on? It's one of them. Um, we're, getting, <laughs> we're getting a little ahead of ourselves about actually sharing content and such, but yeah, sharing relevant content on your social networks is important. But again, we'll, we'll get to that in detail. So that's the theory. Let's put it into practice. We're going to create a Google Plus account. If you've already got Gmail or a YouTube account, or a Google Maps account or whatever, if you already have some Google account, we'll be able to set this up easily. If you don't, we will create one and it's still relatively easy. Can I get, just get a show of hands? How many of you have a Gmail account? It's about half the class. Okay, so here's what we'll do. You want to go back to your... If you've already got... Let me head myself off. Google Plus and Facebook share a, a characteristic in that Google Plus and Facebook want a real person to create an account and then create as many business accounts as they want. If you create a business account directly on Google Plus or Facebook, you're technically not doing it the right way and you're not going to get the best result. Because a business account will give you statistics and it will give you the ability to do promotions and so forth. But a personal one doesn't. So if you've already got a Facebook account, great. When we talk about Facebook, we'll talk about then attaching a Facebook business page. If you've already got Gmail, 
then most likely that means you've got a personal Google Plus account, even if you've never used it. And then what we're going to talk about is attaching or activating a business account. And you can activate as many as you want. So the way it works is we will create a personal account which you don't need to use. You don't need to put any personal information. You don't need to put your high school. You don't need to put your place of employment. You just need a personal account. And then we'll look at creating the business profile to actually have a business account. So at the top right corner, go back to Google. Uh, go back to google.com slash plus, plus Mashable. At the top right corner, you will see sign in. Click on that. Even if you don't have an account, click on that. Sign in at the top right. Or actually, if you are able to sign in, click sign in. At the top, I also see join Google+. Plus. So if you don't have an account of Gmail, click join Google+. Plus. If you do have a Gmail account, click sign in. So this is going to be a little different for, for everyone because some of us already have an account and some of us don't. I'm going to show briefly the, the process if you don't have an account. And if you do have an account, just hold on a moment. But I've clicked at the top to join. Yes? How did you get at the top, uh, go to the address google.com slash plus Mashable. Do you already have a Gmail or not? So then at the top right corner, click Sign In. So I'm going to click Join Google Plus as if I don't have an account. If you've already got a Gmail, then type it in and press Next. If you don't have an account, click Create, click create an account. I have one, but I don't have a password. You can try to retrieve it or create a brand new account. That's fine. So if you are going to create an account, it's going to ask you so for some information. Um, technically, you could fill it in not quite accurately. I do recommend you fill it in accurately, however, because this is going to give you a lot of great features. It's going to give you access to Google Plus and YouTube and all of that. And YouTube is another social network. You may not have thought of it that way, but YouTube is another social network that also has hundreds of millions of users. I so you want? I have a Gmail, but I can't remember my password. You can try to retrieve your password. Click somewhere there where it says, "Did you forget your password?" Or you can create a new account. So let's take a moment to either create an account or to log in. Let me give you maybe a couple of minutes. If you need any help, call me over. The main little speed bump is if you just want to log in or create an account, I can't show you exactly that. Everyone varies a little bit. But once we log in, then we'll see. So we're on the last spot. We'll wait at this point. We can leave these items here. We'll just wait at this point and then proceed in just a moment.
Let's go into try to send you a text message to your phone. And if you do have your phone, you can check if it's sent it to you and have a different treatment. Now, if you go through this process, it will probably reset your password. No, maybe you don't want that was a good deal. Right? So uh, I've been asked a couple of times, I'll, I'll let everyone know. So again, we're going to be creating a personal account first, and then we're going to create as many business accounts as we want. So in, in, in the real world example then, uh, I'm, I created my personal Victor account, and then for the various clients that my company takes on, I went in and created an account for them. But those business accounts will not see anything of my private information. They are separate. They've set it up that way so that they don't see anything of my private content. So I want to give you maybe one more minute. Hopefully you're able to log in and it shows a screen of posts and such. You don't need to proceed very far. Just make sure it allows you to log in. If it doesn't look quite right, call me over and we'll get everyone on track. Just keep going. Thank
So uh, hopefully you've gotten to that point. If you're not quite there, that's okay. Remember, I'm recording this stuff, so I do need to move on at this point. But uh, I'm going to log in with my uh, with my personal one, and then we will proceed. All right, so I've logged in. This is my personal. I can tell it's my personal account because at the top right corner it has my photo. Yours probably doesn't have your photo, and that's okay. It probably has just a little blue man. That's fine. But it's showing me here that this is my personal account. It's got my name. If you click on your little blue guy at the top right corner one time, click on it one time, you'll see then that... Um, and in my case, for example, then it shows these are all of the other Google Plus business accounts I'm managing. Me and the other members of my company are managing these other accounts. So at the top right corner, it shows I've got different business accounts. Yours probably doesn't because you've only used it as personal. So this is how we would switch back and forth between them. Uh, you don't have any yet, so don't worry about that. But now what we'll do is... Um, on the left, we're going to have this menu. This menu, mine currently says Profile. If you hover your mouse over it, so don't click on it, just put your mouse on it, and it pops open to show you these different sections. We will be looking in detail what these different sections are, but before we go further, again, this is your personal account. You don't need to put your picture. You don't need to put your employment history. You don't need to use it as a personal account. We're going to create a business account right now and start using that. So hover over the Google menu right here, and one of the items will be Pages. This is where you can create business pages, delete them, add managers, because it's not just myself that runs the Google Plus of these clients. It's the other people that are also in my company. So you can set managers. More than one person can run a Google Plus business page. So hover over the menu and select Pages. Click Pages. And again, because I've already done the, I do this for, for these different clients, mine is full of these business pages. You, I believe, have a little video, and then does it say Get Your Page? 
Okay, so when you you can watch the video at your own at your own at your own time, but click on get your page. There should be a blue button that says get your page. And it asks, choose a business type, storefront, service area, brand. One of the reasons we're bothering to create a Google Plus account is because Google Plus is so integrated with Google search. When someone searches for Italian restaurants in Google, your page of Italian restaurant might appear above your competitors because you've taken the time to create a Google Plus page and your competitor has not. So if I do a Google search, I get results, and then I get a section that looks like this. These businesses stand out and make me want to click them more than these other ones that don't have any, any interesting call out. And that's because they've got a Google Plus page. So that's one of the reasons why we're creating a Google Plus page for your business, so that we can have this sort of spotlight that your competitors might not have. So the first option here, okay, are you a physical location, a storefront? On your, are you on Main Street? Do you have a warehouse? Are you a physical location? That would be your storefront. Uh, you might be one of those, but you might not fully be able to set this up because it wants to confirm that you are the legitimate owner of that storefront. Because what's to stop your competitor to, from creating a Google Plus page in your name and then putting out terrible things? To stop them is that this will want to verify your location with a phone call to your business. So if your competitor is not in, at your store to answer the phone and say, yes, Google, I'm the right person, then they won't be able to steal your name. So for us, you probably will not be able to do this effectively because you're not at your store. You won't be able to answer the phone and confirm, that's me at my storefront. That's okay. We're going to select either service area or brand, and this can be changed. And maybe just for practice, maybe you're not doing this for your business right now, maybe just for practice and to learn this, you can do this. You can delete and create as many Google Plus pages as you want. Maybe just for practice, you'll create a brand new fictional business to understand how this works. Once we understand better, delete that fictional page and then set it up for real, because the more you do it, <laughs> practice makes perfect. Yes? Is this going to affect how YouTube connects? Because will the YouTube connect your G Plus or Google Plus? Google, Google Plus and all the Google services are separate to some degree. They are linked together. But um, it could be, depending how you set yours up, that yes, if you delete your Google Plus page, it could delete your YouTube. But on the screen to delete, it'll ask you, also delete this, also delete this, don't delete that. Okay. So in your particular case, we might look at it during the break, but we'll see. Yes. So I have two of them already on here, but ones that are old and the second one, that. Yeah, you can delete the old one and start using this one as the correct one, sure. Yes. So I think maybe I have the same question. If I, I already have a business page set up, but I've never went through this process, storefront, service area, is that something new that We'll probably have to talk individually because you might have the business set up actually as a personal account, or it might be set up in another way. So we'll, we'll see your particular needs during the, the breaks. But for, for right now, just to learn this, I would select this and make up a, you know, a fictional version and see how it works. Yes. So again, with this, if you have a clean search, you know, service area would still probably cover you. Service area could work, but do you have actually a storefront where you do the cleaning? Do people come to the store? Most likely service area would work. Brand could also work. There's no wrong answer here, really. But the storefront really is for the people that have a physical location. So probably for yourself, service area. Yes? Photography in a studio that you have that people come? You're mobile. You go there. Most likely service area. Okay, so then 
brand should also work <clears throat> because that'll be your company. Your, your brand is the one that is doing the business. So brand should also work. I'm going to select brand. So if you can't go very far under storefront or service area, select brand for the moment. It asks for a page name. This is not the address. This is not the Google Plus vanity address. This is the name that will appear on top of your profile or if someone searches you. So I'm going to make up a company here. Victor's Bakery. And I'm writing here with capital letters and spaces and so forth. Again, this is not the address of my Google page. And then it says website. This is a link back to your website. Again, it's not the address of your Google Plus page. We set that up later. So if you have already an address to your website, you want to add that in. Because again, we want links back to our main website. That's where I'm actually going to make a sale. Yes? You can, but maybe for the moment, select uh, select it, select the brand, and then it will will be able to fulfill your particular needs uh, individually. Type of page, select type of page, product or brand, entertainment, community, other. Not a lot of choices, but let's say okay, I'm a bakery, and this is my page, so I could do product or brand, entertainment, community, other. There's no wrong answer really. This can be changed, of course, later. Um, I'm going to select brand because my Victor's Bakery is a brand. I have a storefront maybe, but then I also sell my stuff at Trader Joe's. So I'm just trying to get attention for my brand. You want to activate the I, I agree to the page terms and conditions, and you're authorized to create this page. If you want to see what those pages, terms, and conditions are, you can click that and then you'll get several paragraphs of legalese that you can read through. And basically it's saying that you're not going to be using this service for illegal purposes or for harassment, bad stuff. Once you fill that part in, click Create Page. Eventually, it should get you to a screen that says, Welcome to Google My Business. We've brought together the best of Google all in one place. Use Google My Business to build your brand presence on Google Search and Google+. Grow and engage your audience with great content and understand how customers find your brand and interact with you. So you don't get this stuff as a personal account. You don't get statistics you don't get found as easily on Google search. This is why we create a Google Plus page. If you see this screen here, click on Get Started. If you closed it, that's okay. Just follow along for a moment. I'm going to click Get Started. We get this screen with a variety of things we need to fill out. We're going to take a break soon so that you can take a moment to fill this stuff out, but uh, I have here a very generic icon. At some point, I need to put my company's uh, logo. You're going to be more legitimate and therefore get more followers the more that all of these things are filled out. The first it says, be found by your customers. Complete your business info to help customers find you on Google Search, Google Maps, and Google+. You can click Next. Engage your customers. Share business updates, news, and special offers to keep your customers in the know. And we have some options we can look at. So again, the purpose of all of this social media is a form of marketing, a form of advertising. You're going to be tweeting something, Google Plusing something, putting something on Instagram to an audience. And you might say, well, 
do I put the same thing on every network? As a beginner, you could. But ideally, you're putting different things on different platforms because they're different demographics. To entice people to follow you on all the networks, that's why you're putting different things. Because maybe your Google Plus is all about sharing those coupons. So you can only get coupons if you follow us on Google Plus. Maybe on Facebook you're using that also for some exclusive offer. And your Twitter is the one for everyone. Maybe you're using Instagram to post pictures or create contests. Instagram is useful for a contest. You can have people take a selfie with our, with our product, take a selfie with our cupcake, and hashtag it cupcake selfie to win something. So you could use each of the networks for a particular purpose. Obviously, that's a lot of time and effort. As a beginner, use it for the same thing, sure. As you get more adept at this and confident, then you can specify. We'll see that we're able to put text, text posts, photo posts, video posts, etc. Next. At the top right corner, there's a little uh, grid that helps us jump between the different Google profiles. Google Plus, Google Maps, Gmail, Google Search. It's all in there. In this little grid. So if you get lost, where did I end up? You can find your way back with the, the little Google Apps grid and select back to Google Plus. Next. Switch profiles easily. I showed you this a little while ago. I had my picture because it was my personal account, and then I clicked on it and it showed all my business pages. Now you will have that ability to switch between personal and business pages. And I'll click Done. This screen that I'm looking at is the My Business screen. Hover your mouse over the menu here briefly. Put your mouse there, don't click on anything, just hover. And you see these same kinds of menu items? A couple are different compared to the, biz to the personal one. Number one is that at the top it says My Business and also Google Plus page. So we're going to look at navigating these different screens after the break, but if you get lost, you also want to know that that menu takes you back to the business or to the people or to your photos. And here I've got a brand new generic Google Plus page. Um, there's a chicken or the egg situation. I can start posting great pictures of my products. I can start posting polls. I can start posting content. But I have no followers. So basically, no one's paying attention. Well, I want to get followers. So I could show you the tips and techniques to get followers. But the chicken or the egg conundrum comes in in that if I'm trying to get followers right now, that's not going to work very well because my profile has a generic icon. It has no biographical information. It's not filled in with a tagline. It's a generic, out-of-the-box profile that many people are going to ignore because they're not going to take you seriously. They're going to see a profile that is basically empty. Why would I follow you? You must be a spammer. You just created the account to steal my email. So the conundrum is, we're not going to try to get followers yet. We have to set a foundation. We have to fill in these various profile attributes that I'll show you. We do then have to post a few things to no one. And then once we've got that foundation, then we're going to start to get fo attract followers. So the first thing is, here we'll click that edit button, that big red edit button. And there's all of these sections that we should that we should complete. Uh, don't worry about people just yet. It doesn't make sense. But here, there's no tagline. There's no introduction. There's no contact information. We'll talk about communities later. There's a link to my website, yes, but maybe I've also got a Facebook. Maybe I've also got an Etsy store. Maybe I've also got other links. That hasn't been filled in. So under this edit screen is where we can also select to change the logo. I want to get away as soon as I can from that generic blue icon to my company logo. I didn't bring it with me, so I'll have to do it at home. 
you probably didn't bring it with you. I want to change this generic picture as well. We saw that Mashable had a nice big graphic up there that catches your attention. We'll look at other Google Plus page profiles to get inspiration, but you also want to change that cover photo. Make that unique. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, our second break, and you should take a moment as best as possible to fill in the section of story, contact info, and links. It's pretty self-explanatory. You try it on your own a bit, and after the break I will come back to it and maybe give you some tips. But you try for the moment to edit as much as you can about your profile so that we are a more legitimate profile. We're going to take a break between 11.25 and 11.35, and when we come back we'll continue to set a foundation to then try to attract followers.